I, I don't want a group of followers. I don't want anybody following me. I want a group of people that are leaders of themselves because one person could be taken out and then there goes the entire cause and the movement. But this is the direct path for getting a soul to truly stand up and see things for themselves without following somebody else because each individual person starts holding their flame and holding their truth with an absolute fact without question. And that is an unstoppable force. Yeah. yeah. And teaching people this becomes that because it's a tool for individuals to remember that they have that God given right, if they desire to step into it. Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Alicia Brasche here at Cosmic Gateway, and I'm very excited to have a very special guest with me today. I'm here with Darius J. Bright, and he is a prolific out-of-body experiencer. He has had um, experiences since childhood that has led him to where he is today to be a public speaker, and he teaches how to access out-of-the-body state. So today we're going to be diving in to speak a little bit about Darius's um, upbringing, his childhood, his experiences, and his dedication and focus that has allowed him to access the other side and awaken dormant abilities. So Darius, thank you so much. Welcome for being, welcome and thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's uh this is gonna be a pretty interesting one because it's I'm gonna share a lot of a lot of things uh related to also the background and things that led me up to present date of of what, why I'm doing what I'm doing really. And, yeah. yeah so. And I think that's so important. And I, I really love to hear people's personal stories because it, it gives, it adds context that makes you understand. And I think it's um, inspiring to know what people have gone through and how they've got to achieve where they are today. And I, I hope that this message and this video may um, inspire other people to you know, get really clear on what it is that, you know, they want to achieve or their soul's calling and apply the focus and dedication that you seem to have <laughs> mastered so well. So um, maybe let's just start off. I'd love to know about, like, let's start at childhood. Like, where did you grow up and what sort of, you know, how old were you and what sort of experiences were you having as a child? Yeah, so I was born in Pennsylvania, so America. Mm -hmm. And now as a child, I was always awake to things. Um, but I wasn't your typical kid, right? And all, the, the, all kids are awake to things because they're tuning into the the other side and, and seeing things. But the, they're, when they're there, that's quickly stifled and like shut down as mine was never shut down. Mm -hmm. I, at, mine was only shut down to due to fear of seeing things, not understanding things that I understand now. Um, so growing up, it was, my life was very, very different from other people, right? Because you're even talking about when I was around 12, 13 years old, I was uh, telling basically uh, my mother about how the Federal Reserve banking system works, how it's a tool for enslavement, like so. <laughs> And writing on a whiteboard of how they control and enslave humanity here. So the awakening was not just on the spiritual sense, but it was on the sense of also the 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 onslaught and attack on people here and the souls here, including on understanding certain things, just a natural intuitive instinct of understanding things. Um, now, what when I was a kid, a lot of the out of body stuff was happening to me naturally. And not necessarily coming out of the body too, because some of the things that I see out of body are what, or what I talk about as the physical beings. I was seeing that physically with my physical body as well. And this is a, this is the kind of stuff that freaked, freaked me out. And also, you know, even with my parents as well, like they would end up, so particularly my uh, mother wouldn't end up, she wouldn't believe the stories and the things that I was seeing until, until one day, uh, I, I remember running up into our room and I said, you know, the beans, uh, the beans back downstairs and, you know, r ran into our room. And then she, she's like, no, you're, you're just, you're not, you're not seeing anything. And she opened up. So when we're in the room, she opens up the bedroom door 
And when she opens up the bedroom, uh, the door to look down the hallway, she saw the being that that was that we were communicating with, <laughs> saw the being right there. And she slammed the door shut so fast and so hard. And she said, pull the dresser in front of the door. And she's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've never seen her freak out that much. I think it like scarred her forever, to be honest with you, because it's like, wow, this is actually true. So all of the paranormal stuff as a child was happening to me big time. Um, and a lot of the things that I was seeing, right, even in, you know, because a, a lot of the times I would say it was like a 50-50, like blending between coming out of my body, not realizing that I was, because when you come out of your body now, it is just as physical as a physical body. So it's like this blend, constant blend. And there's a lot of things that I was seeing, communicating with as a kid that most of the things that I was in contact with put me into fear because of the lack of understanding of who they were. And it was just like seeing these things. And I was just like, no, that's the bad guy. That's the thing that's attacking me. When really, when I look back at majority of those experiences, it was actually planting seeds to where I am at present date right now. And I'm so glad that you touched on that because that was a level of understanding I came to it for myself was that you know, um, and and I'm, I will go into it later, but you've been able to put so many of the pieces of the puzzle together for me because I was having a lot of out-of-body experiences as a child too, and I know that so many people do, and it's the lack of understanding and the fear that we kind of, through our filter or lens, um, we, we feel like we're under attack or we're being harmed in, in some capacity. So I'd like you to speak a little bit more about that if you want to go into that. Yeah. So the, I'll go to the sleep paralysis first yeah, okay. because, because the, the sleep paralysis, I was, um, when I first started sharing the sleep paralysis things and what, what it actually is, how it's the gateway to the other side, I didn't actually realize how many, just that alone would help so many people actually start coming out of their body. Like, like a lot of, a lot of people are doing it now because the understanding of what it actually is that ties into the fear aspect, mm -hmm. which the fear, which then prevented them from accessing that which everybody has the right to access. Now, can the... I just interject for one second? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I've had out of body experiences all my life, and they not as regular as I've gotten older. But after we had a, a big conversation about my experiences, and you explain things to me, I've actually successfully had out of body experiences where I'm in much more control. And that was just after one conversation. So that was yeah, yeah, thank you, Darius. That was quite profound. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, it, it, it happens quick to like people like you and other people that have the that that are experiencing certain things. It's just a little bit of clarity of like probably a shift of just a perspective, and then bam, like it's just it just kicks on. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty damn quick. Yeah. yeah, I was like, whoa, that happened really fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, th th this is part of the, this is part of the whole thing too. Uh, I'll go into the fear, but this is part of the whole thing too. It's like, I'm, I'm not necessarily, I, I don't want a group of followers. I don't want anybody following me. Uh, for instance, I want a group of people that are leaders of themselves because one person could be taken out. Like, let, let, let's say for instance, if a leader, leader, people are just following somebody that, you know, they just cut that person's head off essentially. And then there goes the entire cause and the movement. But this is the direct path for getting a soul to truly stand up and see things for themselves without following somebody else, because each individual person starts holding their flame and holding their truth with an absolute fact without question. And that is an unstoppable force. Yeah. Yeah. And teaching people this becomes that because it's a tool for individuals to have or or remember that they have that god-given right if they desire to step into it yeah. all right yeah. um now with the fear side of things too as a kid i didn't have the understanding that the full the, well more of the full stepping into my power right because even as a kid i thought that something could control and entrap me the soul or harm me the soul mm -hmm. and that is not true at all 
you, you can never you can never harm and trap or enslave and enslave the soul unless it believes it to be so and that very belief gives your power away to then be imprisoned by fear-based narrative programs right and so when i realized that older where i'm at now i realized wow all of these things as a kid right like this fear-based narrative stuff was literally just it was like a direct plug into my you could say my energy mm -hmm. which was just siphoning it right and so i realized holy like this is the fear is the thing that cuts you off from everything it's the thing that holds you back i mean there, there there's many other layers that apply to it but fear is the biggest thing that holds people back from accessing things and awakening things and preventing them to see what, like just just beyond the the wall of fear is all the pleasures and everything that you want to experience yeah so i'm so glad you touched on that because that's been a really predominant theme that i've recognized um that, that's sort of come up and highlighted again is this whole thing around childhood and i i believe that souls that have come in for an important purpose <laughs> um have a certain mission have um, access to higher consciousness i do believe that there is literally a plug in the energy field that siphons and creates that fear that kind of keeps them entrapped and I think we're at a precipice right now where a lot of people are being able to remove that or clear that and yep. step into their power. And, and I, I get pretty excited when I think about that at, at a mass level, imagine all these people just taking their power back. It, it's game over. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. yeah. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Create, create, create a group of leaders, not followers. And the, uh, there you go. I mean, that, that that's the, that's the point right there. Is that, is that, is that also the, the power that each individual holds within them like none of this is special to one individual it's not a special thing mm -hmm. it's, it's it's just it's just a ability mm -hmm. right that everybody has access to do and and it and it's more prominent in children purely because they don't have all of the baggage belief systems programs of self-sabotaging themselves mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and so that gets programmed into them of shutting that down and that's the sad part because then all of these abilities the natural abilities become dormant and weak and it takes more effort as you are older mm -hmm. to just wake it because it's it's like a uh, atrophied muscle at that point you know yeah. what what would you say to people because i've heard this like countless times through you know working with people so what would you say to people if they have had some sort of conscious or unconscious experience in their childhood that was fear-based or trauma-based and they feel like they came in with all this knowing and all this ability and all of a sudden it, the lights just got shut off like and they've been struggling most of their life do you what would you kind of speak to about or what will say to those people if they're if that is their storyline up until this point so, 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 so basically what you're saying is people that had the ability young and then automatically just shuts off. Yeah. I, I would say, look back at, to, uh, look back at where you were when you were a kid again, if you, as far back as you can, and you, you you'll see that your language was different of, 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 of basically that, what you wanted. Your, your belief systems were slightly different as well. Like typically typically kids don't have this perceived concept of limitation right they have it a little bit but like i mean this is where you have kids i don't know you know doing the most craziest things th that that could actually kill you and they're like well, what are you talking about this is just <laughs> a normal thing yeah and so i will look back at that in, in particular, because a lot of the things that are that are, like I said, on top of like just the natural things just shutting down over time mm -hmm. and becoming an atrophied, but it, that that does take practice again to like spark, you know, just light the flame again to spark it and then keep the flame going. But it's 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 around your belief system as well. A lot of people have become so docile and so submissive, and so and so new age, giving their power away constantly that stepping into their power they think somehow stepping into their power and being awake 
is this very passive thing. And it's the complete opposite of that. All of this is a very active, it, it's like, it's, it, it's the power to, to, to move mountains, essentially, mm -hmm. you know, it has nothing to do with the, with what I just said as well, the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And so I would start for people like that, righteously commanding their, their, their field, commanding their, their, their abilities but not just using the words to command it, but actually go towards it and practice it, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very active thing. It's a very active role. Um, but yeah, that's a, that, that would be my advice for that. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you. I know we sort of sidetracked. So did you want to go back? Is there other things that you want to share around the childhood and growing up that kind of, and will lead into the progression of, of where you are today? <laughs> so. Yeah, okay. All good. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so... The childhood stuff, as I said before, it was always it was always very much experiencing the true universe, as I would say, the true nature of reality, seeing more than what the what we could physically see here. So tuning into the dimensional spaces and stuff like that, communicating with the beings in the out of body state and physically as a kid. Um, now that, like I said, I, I shut that down due to fear as a kid because I'm not understanding what I understand now. And then with shutting that down to, to fear, it's like I put the wall in front of me and that wall stopped all contact and experiences. And it wasn't until I was around 16 years old is when they started, it sparked back up again, because at that point, I, you know, I got to the, got to some level of like, you know, what, you know, I just want to know it again. I want to see it. And I got to the point when I was 16 where, you know, I was just like, well, show me, show me everything now or else I'm making an ultimatum. If you don't show me everything now, I'm going to figure it out the next the next day because I'll end up taking myself out essentially, you wow. know. So <laughs> it it was a very strong uh, uh, command that I made at that period of time when I was 16. Now you need to understand, 16 years years old for me was not your typical 16 year old because, like I said before, like 12, 13, 14 years old, and even even as a child, I was awake to things. I was awake to the you could say the foundation of the corruption of, of this realm through not just the spiritual warfare, but also the physical things and implements that they use to enslave the, 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 the person into just being a slave and not actually doing their path and what they came here to do. Mm -hmm. So with all of that into the forefront, you know, at 16 years old, I had enough, absolutely enough. And I was like, well, if you don't tell me, what this place is, why I'm here, all of that, then I'm going to figure it out anyways. So there it is. And that's when I was actually taken out of the construct for the very first time. Wow. But like, like that was the full blown experience with a being that I call that, that, that identified as Celeste. And this was the out of body state, 100%, 100% fully conscious present. You could even call it a near death experience. Right. And she showed me everything again. And at that time, in that period of time, I didn't even understand what everything was. It was just like, I could just say, oh, it's these balls of universes and this, and like, this is how it felt. But now I could go into detail of what these, these realms are, the constructs, the dimensional spaces, how time works. But she showed me, it showed me all of that, including the, what she said was the beginning, which was the, that people call it the void, the black space. All right. Um, she showed me how the realms were working, where where this place was to where it was going to be like that. You could, people call it the celebration, right, um, on the earthly realm. Mm -hmm. um, and so that happened at 16. Now, from that point is when you could say everything started to slowly kick back on online again, because I wasn't in so much fear. I was still in fear, but it's, it was a slow process of kicking back on, kicking back on, kicking back on. But that's when it actually led me into um, I, that age around 18, 16 to 18, stuff like that. Like I was a very, I'm still physical now, but I was very, very hyper-focused on physical training, thinking that somehow, you know, being a, a master in my physical body w would give me some sort of spiritual you know, heightened ability. And that's not, that's not true either. It, it, it gives you a mindset and focus, 
uh, of things, you know, um, e even to the point where, you know, I was, I was doing, uh, I was in combat sports, um, and I was actually going to take a career in professional combat, you know, boxing. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, I was actually offered to go, uh, professional in boxing. And so that, that was my path that I was headed down. So you, you, you could sort of see, you know, spiritually being spiritually attuned. And then also that, like, you know, the, the offers there. Um, and I, do you believe that you had a choice point? Like you could have, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that it was definitely because at, at the same time that that was offered, I was also being offered to travel the world, right? And 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 even though the professional route would allow me to have do that, but in a very different way, and I thought I made the choice it was like you, you know I don't want to I don't want to have a career and a life of punching people in the face. That's just not what I want to do. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> so so I chose the other path that that was not preset at all that path was not set for me whatsoever it was it was let's jump on a tour travel the world you know and it was completely random there was no you could say there was no foundation right um and that actually led me literally all across the world and that's when i started to travel across america from pennsylvania to la so we flew to la and then did the whole all the way down so going into the uh all the way back to florida pa and then I went from there to Australia, right? From Australia to uh, Morocco. Uh, and I was in Morocco for nine months. Um, and then from Morocco, I went to Norway, to then France, then Germany, Spain, oh, Portugal, wow. uh, then caught a ferry back to Morocco, then went back to the States to set myself up again, you know, just to get my bearings again. Um, and then from there, came back to Australia, went to then New Zealand, you know, and back to Australia. So I've, I've been- You were just bouncing around. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> um, and, it, it, and in that, uh, what, what, which I actually want to share something, which, which in that as well, I was so focused on the physical side of things. And th th this is why I said before, like the, the physical, the, the mental focus that I have or the focus that I have on things is very like, you know, everything else, when I focus on something, everything else, it's just like this and everything just, I tunnel in on that until I hit it, what, whatever it is that I want to want to achieve really. Um, and that's when I actually started to do a different form of physical training, you know, to try to, take all of my energy because I have so much energy and funnel that into something. And that, I mean, th this is where I even, you know, when I talk about me wanting to master my physical body, like a, like a pretty much wanted to master my physical capabilities as much as I can and mastering my physical body in a art form. So that's when I started to look into different art forms of training. And this is where I'll share my screen here, where I also achieved what you would say is achieving mastery over one's body. <laughs> you know, in the physical sense. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. Because I thought that somehow this was a form of, it was going to give me some special, more spiritual awakening, you know, so, something, but that it's, it's a dead end path because I mean, the, the, the physical body does it's, it's, it's just a dead on path, but I know through the boxing and that, that level of uh, focus that I had and the level of focus here that I had to do these things with my physical body has, has only been to the benefit of also awakening the dormant abilities within the physical body through the out of body state, because I still apply those same level of focus to that as well. Um, and so what, what I've learned from these things with the physical side of things as traveling and things like that, and, you know, giving you my background is this is where, if you go on my site, I have focus, simplicity, discipline, mm -hmm. right? Because it takes focus first mm -hmm. and it takes simplicity because mm -hmm. everybody likes to complicate the fuck out of everything. When, <laughs> if you could simplify the complex, that's where, that's what, that, that's where the, you could call it the genius, you know, mm -hmm. is, is there, right? Mm -hmm. And it takes discipline because you need to constantly be disciplined. And this is why I said before, None of this comes when people think about awakening and things like that, or or being spiritual. 
they, they have it due to all of the programs and narrative in the onslaught of the attack on the soul here. It's completely flipped where they think that means be submissive. Mm -hmm. That means be passive. That means go with the flow. Mm -hmm. When your soul is like an ocean of itself, that when you project that energy, it is literally unstoppable with whatever you put your focus on. Mm -hmm. And I've done that in the physical sense. And I'm doing that now with the out of body sense as well, because I understand the power and the authority that I hold and each and every soul holds as well, mm -hmm. if they truly desire to pursue that path. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that that was basically my whole, you know, skipping over some things, mm -hmm. but you know, from the very childhood in the beginning of seeing the things as a child, to then, you know, 16 years old with the experience with Celeste, to them moving forward into the physical things, how I thought that that was benefiting me, what I've gained from that, then applying that to where I am now mm -hmm. with uh, the out of body experience and, and going towards that to actually under understanding how to control it more, you know, which, which is the focus that I've been doing with that, teaching people how to achieve it and also accessing the other side and doing what they consider what, what they say is the great work, which is waking people up to the, the other side. Because once they wake up to here, mm -hmm. the eternal aspect of who and what they really are, they wake up to everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, yeah. perfectly said. Now I have a question for you. Yeah. <laughs> Focus and uh, dedication and that simplicity, does that come natural to you? <laughs> or is that something that you've had to really work on and master? Because I, I giggle about myself because I think, Focus and dedication is something I can be really in and out of. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I guess I'm curious, like, is that um, naturally within you or is that something that you've had to like work hard at? Or do you feel like some of the physical training really helped build um, that over time? Well, I mean, it's, it, it was always there. Like I always had that level of all of those, uh, you know, those, those things. Cool, yeah. Like, but the the that story of the physical side of things has uh, it i mean how you train the body is how you train the mind when i was when i was actually doing the physical side of things like i was always trying to blend philosophy into what i was doing because otherwise it's just what what are you doing you know what i mean it becomes pointless if there's no greater purpose behind that and so that's where actually when i was doing all the like the image that i shared with you and all the physical arts, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's where I that's why I said the quote is how you train the body is how you train the mind because literally how you are training yourself physically mm -hmm. is how you are actually training the way you think in your mind to per, uh, project and do things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, doing that side of things as growing up has definitely um, allowed for a it, it it's heightened it really it's heightened that focus it's heightened that discipline mm. and simplicity and things mm. so, yeah. yeah thank you for, for sharing that um i did have another question just going back a little bit because you were talking about when you were 16 and how you you had had enough and you had like all those uh, experiences had stopped and and that connection and the command <laughs> that you <laughs> very strongly put forward and obviously it was kind of a rapid um process for you is there anything that you could share to people who are watching who may feel like they are at that point of real disconnection or lost their way or feeling stuck in some capacity like yeah well well i, no, no, I wouldn't i wouldn't do what i did at 16 <laughs> okay. um, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't because <laughs> that, that, that that's unnecessary that that was more like a, a fit at 16 yeah it, you know <laughs> Um, but what what the, what I would do and, and tell them is is just understanding that the power that we all hold within and the ability to access the things is is there for people that really focus on it. Like it's it's you know it's 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 almost like um, I understand and I, I'm I'm not I'm not ignorant to to pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. It, like the, those things, right? Because it's, 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 it's always, it's always, it's always, you have a choice to always stay in that state, mm -hmm. right? 
and then become a victim and constantly be a victim and victim. And then constantly, because that is in your field all the time, you will constantly project things in your field to be a victim of, mm. right? So it's more of moving mm. in a way mm. that is stepping out of those things. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know it's, it, I know it's, a, it's going to be hard just to say, just step out of it, but you know, but it's, it's changing literally the way that you think about things and standing in your power. Mm -hmm. And, and it's almost like people want, people want to access things or they want to do things, mm -hmm. but this is where, like, like I said before, which we'll get into as well is how the whole new age love and light Perfect. spirituality mm -hmm. has really attacked the souls here to think somehow mm -hmm. that being in their power mm -hmm. is sitting back and just thinking about something mm -hmm. right and just and, and and just and just i it's like i, I want to manifest and i want to do this and they just they're using only one aspect mm -hmm. to it which is just thinking the thinking is then you project. So when you think of something, you imagine it, you, you, you start to birth the light. You start to birth that creation from that point, start physically walking that path, spiritually, uh, physically, the, everything. Um, and, and it's a great, it's sad in a lot of ways because it, when people step into their power, their true power, the, 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 they'll realize that all of these things and all these attacks on them to make them sit down passively and submissively, right? When they reverse that, right? And they, they, they start stepping into who they are, their, their, as their essence, their pure, unique signature. I mean, you, you, you're an unstoppable force at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. this is why, th th this is what I, um, like, a something that I wrote before, like to, to awaken and step into your power, it's tearing off the cloak of conformity, right? Mm -hmm. It's literally tearing that off mm -hmm. and stepping into your raw, authentic truth unapologetically. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I love how you because I've often said, I think that and the way that I sort of interpret it is like the, the energetic component of the masculine feminine energy. So the, the feminine aspect or energy is what can bring in the consciousness or the energy, but you have to apply it with guided action. You know, I say to people, you can manifest things, but if you're going to sit on your couch, it's yeah. not going to come knocking at your door, you know, yeah. you, so you know, you got to take those um, intuitive, the intuitive guided aspect and applying it to reach the outcome. Um, is there anything you would like to speak to around what I call guided action or like the masculine component of stepping in and actioning and focus? Um, like, do you get like intuitive nudges of like, if you're focused on creating something, do you get guidance of like, all right, I, I need to do this or I need to do that? Like, how does it work for you? Yeah. So I just get, it, it's a, it's a feeling for me. So it's like, there's people have this, this feeling of I should be doing this and it's, it, it's, it's from the heart. Right. And what, what, what has, what has happened now? And also not, not it had, it is in place, but how I navigate that is I get that feeling and I just walk that path, right. Regardless of what anybody else thinks, but I walk it in integrity and I walk it in love, but not the distorted layers of what people think love is, which is like I said before, the it's it, love is a very powerful force, right? It, it's it, it's the thing it's the energy that will move a mountain that is a very active force right and so that's what i do i follow my intuition and my guidance and the voice that people sh usually shut down right and they shut it down and they don't follow their path and they don't follow their heart because their their field is not clean because their field is influenced by the influence that they have in their life 
and they're afraid to step into the, their unique signature, be who they truly are, because they're afraid of what other people may think in, in their field and their thought forms, creating roadblocks and all this stuff. When really that person needs to step out of all of those things, all right, and disconnect from that and just walk his own path, right? In particular with, I mean, because you're, you're bringing up females and it, it, this is both for females and, and men, and just the soul at large. Like I said before, people have become so docile and weak, and I don't like they they don't really understand that they are like um the the for instance when you when you go to the cathedrals, which is part of the heavenly realms realm five w w within this construct right these these are part of like the you could call it the the Greeks right all right they are not who they were in stature right was perfectly reflected of who they were at a spiritual level right mm -hmm. they were they were strong physically right they were strong mentally they were strong spiritually mm -hmm. and they were standing in that force you go into the halls of amente right all of these beings that i'm that i'm seeing there and in contact with in the records these are strong and powerful souls mm -hmm. you could call them elite souls mm -hmm. right because the, the the greatest the greatest fear right of the they right mm -hmm. is not necessarily just having your average person being you know a macho oh let let me just do this right that that's not necessarily what they fear mm -hmm. right what they fear is souls that are stepping into the true version or the true authentic uh path of their authentic path, standing in love, standing in integrity, being truly awake and aware to things, mm. and not and not uh, sitting down submissively and passively, as what all these new age love and light spirituality awake communities are doing. But they are standing in absolute power and strength and moving forward, right? Similar to what it was like in the heavenly realms, halls of Amente, of who these people actually were in stature. So, I mean, I think it's, it's flipping this as well. It's flipping what people think, you know, I'm trying to really flip the script here, you know? <laughs> what? I guess what I'm hearing from you or the words that are coming to me is like, there, there's been an attack on the masculine masculinity, or there's been an attack on the masculine energy, because I see that as the one that takes the action. And we all have an aspect of that within us. It's not about men or female but it's, it's uh, preventing that stepping into your power and taking that action. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not necessarily, but like I said, it, it it's like, if we were to go to the core of it, it's the soul. It's the soul. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's a soul. Yeah. But, but, but if we are, but if we're just talking about here, realm one, like, yeah. like, you know, then, yeah. Th then yeah, a lot of men are girls at the moment, you know, mm -hmm. it's not, they, 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 they don't even have an ounce of a, uh, testosterone i would say anymore mm. you know and, and i mean how uh, can we break that down of how that is done in in the distortion of the inversion that we're, we're kind of in but ending right now like how how have you seen that um playing out you know in in different ways like i can think of a few but i, I don't want to put words into your mouth like okay yeah okay um for, for instance, like you, you have a lot of these, uh, b b b because I'm going to go on the, go on the, the train of, you know, masculine right now. So it's the train that you want to, all right. So let's just go on the train of, of masculine and it's the masculinity and things like that. And so what a lot of in the spirituality being awake you'll find that in this community, right, it's filled with a lot of passiveness in fe females, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So then you have men that are start to awaken or are awake. Mm -hmm. And literally what they do is because they step out of their power mm. is they turn into females. Mm -hmm. They turn into men that then turn into being submissive, 
being passive and become feminine. Mm-hmm. And I'm not necessarily saying that, you know, females are like a, it, it's, it's, it makes you passive. No, because females are forced to be reckoned with as well. Like I said, if we go to the core of it, it's the, it's the soul, it's the attack on the soul. But right now I'm on the train of the masculine because that's what we're doing, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, so a, a, a lot of these, a lot of that is, there has been such a distortion of what awake really is, right? Because when a soul is truly awake, they see this for what it really is. You know, there, 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 there is no pretending. Hmm. There is no putting on a mask of I'm spiritual today. You know, mm-hmm. that, that, that is, that is a, 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 a facade, right? Because the souls that stand truly in their power and are truly awake, right? And in love, it's more about courage to stand up for what you know to be true and ripping apart the bullshit, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like uh, the, um, <laughs> what's the, what's the thing? It's like separating the oceans. Like, mm. what's that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a visual I got when you were, it's like, it's like, yeah, yeah. true. All the untruths, all the yeah. stored layers, the, the, the bullshit. And, and I think you, you pinpointed that one word that it was coming up to me before of like, does it take courage to do that? Like, have you on your path, even though you've been dedicated and focused and, and connected, like have, I believe it takes a lot of courage to do that because there's so many influences that are against that. Um, yep. how, yeah. Can you talk to courage a little bit on yep. actively pursuing? So a lot of people right now, um, when it comes to actually walking their authentic path, a lot of people right now, you, you hear the sell, you, you hear the saying selling your soul, right? Oh, this person sold their soul. You know, it's typically done. You hear this in the elites, mm-hmm. right? And right now I could sell my soul to you. Right. And how I would sell my soul to Alicia is right now I stand in integrity. I stand in love and I stand in my truth without question. And I walk that path and I do not let anything pierce my armor of stepping out of those things. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that that takes a level of, you could say, courage. Now, what a lot of people are doing is they are selling their soul to these new age propagandas, mm. right? Of, of what they think awake actually is. And what they are doing is they are stepping out of integrity. Mm. They are stepping into a distorted version of love, right? And, the, it, it, and the, they, they are selling their souls to these programs, mm. right? Mm. And therefore taking them off their path of being on their path authentically, speaking their truth and going against the narratives and bullshits that, that, that's out there right? And when they are on that path, right, they're not getting pulled into selling their soul and stepping out of their true expression of self. Mm. And, and, and I say this because it goes back to what, what I was saying before, because you, you could see the mass that is, that is put on the souls, right? Because it's, it's a mask. It's thank you. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. and <laughs> you know, there's something to be said about being what's the right word for this stoic stoicism mm-hmm. you know being that but focused as well yeah. Yeah. D- does that does that perfectly yeah thank you okay yeah i want to change gears a little bit if we can um, when you had that experience when you were 16 and um, you met Celeste and you were shown out of this construct and the creation of all things, how was it coming back for you to adjust? Like what was that experience like to have that and then come back here? Was there a, or 
what is it that made you want to come back here? Like, because I know that when we go out, yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so what, what she showed me, essentially, what Celeste showed me, what she made me want to come back, because she, she showed me the, where this place was at the time that I was 16 years old, and then where it was going to be. All right. And th this is why I said it's not necessarily like, you know, when we're talking about masculine and, and feminine, it, that it's not necessarily about that. It's about the soul. All right. Now, the, when she showed me where this place was, I, she, she gave me the choice. Like you could stay here. And, 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 and I've been offered this choice so many times to present day, more times that I could count anymore. But I always choose to come back from the from the out of body state as well. But she showed me back then. She's like, "Oh, well, this is where it is. This is where it's going to be." It's sort of in a. It there was a. She showed me this place as a celebration. You could say you could say all the realms reopening again and everybody finally re reconnecting. It was like the celebration. People called the event. Now I say this in a way not to put people's hopes up, but I'm sharing just what I was showing, right? At 16 years old, and. When she showed me that, and she said, you could stay here as well, if you choose to, there was a soul, right? My soul desired, it's a, it, it was a soul out of love, out of, out of desire to experience something that will not be experienced again. And so I said, no, I want to come, I want to go back because this is where I always return. Right, I always return back home. The eternal aspect of who and what I really am. I return here. This is the infinite, the infinite. It's it's who I am. Mm -hmm. So if I'm returning back to this, I want to go back to the earthly realm to experience the unexperienced mm -hmm. and what will take place here. And so that's 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 why I came back at 16 years old. I, I honestly, honestly, with, without question, if if I said, yeah, I, I want to stay here. You know, I'll just pass away in my sleep. And it would have been one of those deaths that are like, oh, it's just, we don't know what happened. He just, you know, so yeah, that's, that's the reason. That's powerful. So, I, I thank you so much for sharing that. That just sent like energy rushes all through my body as you said that. And, um, yeah. and I don't want to get into it because I know a lot of people like when and that I, I, I don't want to get into that because I, I've heard you speak on other interviews and, you said it, it's a, an event-based um, unraveling. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I, I tend to and, agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, the, the reason why I don't necessarily like to like to speak about that that much is not necessarily because I don't like sharing the experience, but mm -hmm. I understand where that puts people in. It takes people in a place and disempowers them of like, okay, I'll just wait. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> what are you doing? I can... <laughs> Like continue to access, like access things, right? Um, so that's the reason why I, I tend to shy away from even saying these things because it ends up getting promoted, yeah, and and misunderstood. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I honor that. I think that's very honorable of you because I I do believe that people can get quite. Um, and I was there, so I, this is not a judgment. I I I you know experienced that pocket of like waiting because. I had been shown all that and I was like, oh, it's coming. I don't have to do anything. And <laughs> very quickly realized that my life turned into shit and I actually needed to actively do things that were that my soul was asking me to step forward and do, which is a lot of what you've spoken about. So I really honor and appreciate your wise words and sharing your personal experience. But before we wrap up, um, I would love you to touch on, but you don't have to go into depth um, about the out-of-body state, about the work that you do, um, if you wanted to sort of encapsulate that. And what I would say is, because we're not going to go into depth around that in this particular interview, I would really encourage if that speaks to you and you've been having out-of-body experiences and confused of why you're having sleep paralysis and all that, to, um, and I'll put all the details in the description box below where you can um, follow, you know, Darius's YouTube channel and, and Telegram and his website and all that. And I highly recommend to check out his material. But um, 
because we won't go into it in depth, I would recommend you to go and have a look at some of the playlists on his YouTube channel so you can get up to date with all the information because <laughs> this will be kind of like a, um, a highlight reel, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there, there's information with other interviews that I've done yeah. talking in details with the auto body state. But the, what, what I do <clears throat> is the the out of body experience is is massively misunderstood with dreams lucid dreams astral projection mm -hmm. right and although right they, they they are you are accessing the other side through these spaces typically right um but the out of body state is no different from a near death experience and it's a near death experience controlled because when you come out of your body through an out of body state you are 100% fully conscious and fully aware it's no different than than how consciously aware you are right here. So when you come out of your body, a lot of people are, believe that the soul is, it, it is light, right? But the soul is physical. You have physicality. This is where I said it's all the pleasures of physicality with no limitations. Once you leave the body and you access the other side. So through through the out-of-body state and the work that I do now is I... I through practice and just discipline through everything that I've done in my life, I've developed a method that a three stage method to pop out of your body. And so I applied that for myself, understanding what sleep paralysis is mm -hmm. to shut down my body and to sleep paralysis, then to exit, right? Because a lot of people have this fear of sleep paralysis. And it's a lot of things that I speak on and in depth in other, other interviews as well. But, but but essentially that, that's what I'm doing now uh, teaching teaching that essentially teaching people how to access these things right uh, waking your dormant abilities is what I would like to say yeah but, perfect yeah. but um yeah thank you thank you for sort of like giving that I know it's so in depth and there's so much uh, information but um, we can encourage people to go and to um, and watch more of the interviews that you've done um, Darius, like final thoughts, closing statements. Is there anything that we haven't touched on that is like you feel like is um, important for people to know right now? Because I know we're like it's a pretty intense time right now, you know. So, what's something that you could share to people that are watching this that would be uh, insightful, inspiring, or helpful? To uh, I, I know I've repeated myself. Yeah. Many times. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's it's to truly stand. Mm -hmm. that, that 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 would be the biggest biggest thing that I would want people to take away from this mm -hmm. is to truly stand. Mm -hmm. Um. In in like I said, take off this this cloak of just conforming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I also want to bring up this as well, which is, which is, which is something that I wanted to bring up, yeah. but the people, people think as well, which the, this is, this is sort of off topic, but on topic, but it, it's a positive thing, yeah. but people think that they lose their sense of self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. People think that they lose their sense of individuality, that they merge. Mm -hmm their consciousness with some collective consciousness and that's not true at all that's that's that, that's part of the attack on the soul that's part of attacking the uniqueness of each individual soul's expression right when you leave the body when you cross over when you access the other side and go back to what people consider home you never lose your sense of self and you always keep that. Each individual soul is so unique in their self-expression that they're, they're, we are so different from one another. And so I, the, I don't know why I've been pulled to say that, but I think that that's important to say as well. That for, because it ties into stepping into your power as well. Because when you step into that, it's stepping into your unique expression of self stepping into integrity, stepping into love and going towards that fully and completely. So. Thank you. What, what a perfect note to end on. And I couldn't agree more. I think just to summarize what you were saying and how I have understood what you, you're conveying is that 
often when we get stuck in the distortion, whether that be a toxic relationship, a job, a situation, you know, a mindset, we're, we're often sort of merged or blended with other energies or consciousness and we lose our individuality. And that is the most precious thing yep. that we can possibly access. And that's what is going to be our guiding force to be our fullest and greatest expression. So, um, yep. yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing that very powerful message. Um, Darius, like, thank you so much. How can people connect with you, get in contact with you, learn what you're teaching um what's the best way for people to um find yeah. you so just everything's on my site it's just darisjwright.com that's it um it's just you, you'll find everything there when you go to my website yeah. um and that's that that's how they're going to find the the work that i do what what, what i'm doing mm -hmm. with the out of body state and you know events that i hold etc so yeah, okay. everything's there Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to sit down, connect with you, listen to your wise words of wisdom, your personal experience. And it's really inspiring to see the difference that you're making in supporting people step into their power. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you everyone for watching. Until next time, we'll see you later. All right. Thanks for having me.